it is difficult to say or write the words Ignaz Bruno Halevi is dead. Perhaps only those of you who are fortunate enough to be Hungarian will know him. Perhaps even only those of you who have seen the black chimneys of Erstwert and breathed the city's bitter air. Perhaps only those who visited the terraced grey brick house on Moijeru Street in which Bruno Halevi was born and died. Or it may be, after all, that none of us truly knew him. But we know his work. Or perhaps, in fact, we do not know his work. Ignaz Bruno Halevi came into the world in December 1912. As a boy, he was fascinated by nature, by the world around him. He would spend hours foraging in the storm gutters for drowned birds. His father, an engineer, would bring him home curious rocks, brightly coloured pebbles, chunks of rare minerals. You must be careful with those little Ignats, his father would say to the inquisitive boy, for if you lose them, I will give you a good hiding. There were few other children living in industrial Erstwert at that time. Ignaz was schooled at the home of Father Florian, a retired Orthodox priest, who taught him to recite the story of Prince Argyrus in Greek and beat him with a length of hose. Ignaz was a good scholar. He was resilient. He endured. Happiness would find him. Ava Scheimisch was the dark-eyed daughter of a soap merchant when Ignaz met her in 1931, she was 17, a budding actress, beautiful in spite of her lame left leg, the flower of the Erstwert stage. Ignaz, a shy, big-nosed boy, shivering nightly at the stage door, courted her with glazed pastries and poems he copied from books. It is known that for many years they exchanged letters. This is all that is known. In 1937, Shymesh the soap merchant discovered Ignatz's letters tied with a ribbon beneath Ava's bed. He flushed them into the city sewer and forbade her to write again to her big-nosed lover. In 1939, Ava died from waterborne cholera. Ignatz burned her letters. In 1945, with the artillery of the Third Ukrainian Front darkening the skies over Erstwert, Ignaz, in the candle-lit loft of his parents' home, took a pen, unscrewed the cap from a bottle of ink, spread a sheet of white fool's cap upon a desktop, and began to write. Why does the writer write? Ask, well, why the fire burns, why the wheel turns, why time goes by? Oz. Orkery, the ancient Ignaz Bruno Halevi's greatest novel. Of such a book, what can a man say? Miklos Barnot, the name translates as grief, if anyone were to translate it, is a miller's apprentice in the fictional Hungarian town of Norgrad. When Miklos is a boy, his father, a cruel, proud man, is killed in a mining accident. To support his mother, Miklos must work hard at the mill. He grows bent back from the labour and wheezy from the dust. The flower turns his black hair white. The miller, a kindly soul, takes pity. You are a young man, Miklos, she says, and yet you stoop and cough like an ancient. I've heard what the boys in the village call you. No, cries Miklos. Yes, Nodji Papa Miklos, they call you, not the miller. Grandpa Miklos. You will mill no more, Miklos, says the miller. I will sell my flour to you cheaply, and you will be a baker. So Miklos becomes a baker. He grows to be a man. His back straightens. He no longer coughs. He combs out the flour from his hair. He marries a beautiful, lame girl whom he woos with glazed pastries. And then, when the trumpet sounds, he goes to war. He fights Miklos at Marushti 
at Duberdo and Komarov. And he fights with valour, though he loses an eye at Duberdo. But in the war, Miklos sees only futility and woe. Over the battlefield he grieves. In the dressing stations and the field hospitals he mourns. And though he has gone only a year, he returns to Norgrad an old man once again. His beautiful wife does not know him, and when he tries to explain, she laughs and calls him hunchback and knock-knee and white beard. She goes off to marry a wealthy engineer, and the townspeople point at Miklos in the street and call out, Nagy Papa Miklos. Miklos, for all his wisdom, is friendless and weeps. Winter comes to Norgrad. The snow falls. Novel ends. And now I, Miklos Barnard, Miklos the miller's apprentice, Miklos the baker, Miklos the soldier, not you, Papa Miklos, one eyed Michael Grief, stand before you and say, Ignatz Bruno Holivy is dead! Perhaps you didn't know him. Even if you are a Hungarian, even if you did visit Black Chimney at Erstwurt, even if you called for black tea or a glass of palanca at the little house on Modular Street, you wouldn't have known him. And you would have known the work, would you? The ancient Akogori, Ignat's greatest novel? Would you the blazes? It was never translated into English. What's more, it was never published in Hungarian. <laughs> and for why? <laughs> Simply because it was no damn good. It was declined by seven publishers, and now it sits tied with string in the loft of the house of Ignaz Bruno Halevi's long-dead parents. Who mourns its author? I mourn him. It was not a good book. Ignaz was not a good writer. He had no gift. Look at me, for instance. I'm a thin character, very thin. Tiresome also, and, and my wife. Barely plausible. <laughs> You should hear our dialogue. It's stilted and unrealistic. <laughs> My opinions are trite and misguided. My emotions are sentimental. In chapter 58, Ignaz forgets which of my eyes is missing. <laughs> I should cry with the monster made by Frankenstein. A curse creator! Hateful day when I received life! But I do not. I stand here in mourning. And my mourning is sincere. Ignaz Bruno Halevi made a man. Let people say that if they have nothing else to say. Ignaz made me. So though he made no money, he worked all his life in an Erstwurt steel mill. And though he loved no woman, save one, in vain, and though his book is uh, the most awful swill, so said the gentleman at Korsvar and Son, let it be said, if nothing else be said, that he lived a long life, and that he made a man, and that for God's sake he was a man. Even though now, he swings from a rope knotted around a roof beam. Even so, let those things be said. <laughs>